Welcome to Healing Fire Deliverance Ministries. We are excited this Sunday morning. We just welcome everyone for joining us. I'm Reverend Joseph McLeod. This is my lovely wife, Tanya. Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's so good to be on with you all today. Amen. And we are excited today. For many of you who may be following the Jewish calendar, today is Rosh Hashanah, Amen. which is the Jewish New Year. We're excited about this New Year, honey. Mm, we are. God has some awesome things in store for us as the body of Christ this Amen. New Year. We're excited this Sunday, and we are worshiping the Lord. Today is the day that the Lord has made. And we do rejoice, yes. and we are glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. We certainly give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Yes. We know that God is doing a new thing. It's, just not, it's not just something to say. If we are paying attention to the signs and the times of the shifting of the seasons, mm -hmm. God is doing a new thing. Yes, it's is. no, not by coincidence. It's not by happenstance. It's with God's divine favor, his divine order. Yes. And we want to grab a hold of God. We want to stay connected to God because he's doing a great work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We have a wonderful word this morning for you. We ask that you get your scriptures, get the Bible. The Bible says that Amen. we ought to all study to show ourselves yes. approved. Amen. A workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the, the word, word of truth. Amen. So we encourage you to get your Bible. Yes. And before we begin, we're going to first have a word yes. of prayer. Hallelujah. So if you just join us. Amen. We will pray. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Our Father who art in heaven, yes, hallowed be thy name. Hallelujah. Thy kingdom come. Thine will be done yes. on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Yes, Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against yes, us. Father, and God. lead us not into temptation, Please, but deliver us from evil yes, for thine is the kingdom and the power yes. and the glory forever amen yes. lord we thank you thank that you, we can god. pray the way that you taught us to pray yes, we lord. thank you that we can gather together in your name god you are in our midst when we do god we give you glory and yes, honor lord, we god. give you praise and thanksgiving Hallelujah. we worship you because you are our high god Hallelujah. you are the most high god thank you, you are great and greatly to be praised yes. so lord we thank Thank you this Sunday morning. We thank you for worship. We thank you for your word. Yes. We thank you, God. Hallelujah, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, it is. We're rejoicing. We're Hallelujah. rejoicing. We rejoice. And we're glad in it. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Mm -hmm. God, we praise you this day. We, we you. give you glory. We pray that you would touch someone listening. Touch those that will be tuning in. Whatever their needs are, we pray that you meet every need. We pray that you give them great revelation in your word. Oh, God, that you would take them from faith to faith yes, oh and God. from glory to glory. In it's in Jesus. Jesus' name. Yes. It's in Jesus' name in we Jesus pray. Name. Amen, amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Bless the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, somebody. We are excited, Lord God. Hallelujah. Glory be to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, honey, you know, this is awesome. Yes. And, you know, as I was preparing for this Sunday, a question came to mind. And if you ever look in the scripture, saints, honey, have you ever looked in the scripture and you saw a standard that God has for us to live up to? Or there were things that, Possibly, you, you thought of to say, you know, how am I going to do that? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, for example, right. <laughs> we were talking about fasting, mm -hmm. and uh, we've talked about a 21 day fast mm -hmm. or a 40 day fast. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you may stop and say, how am I going to do that? Right. How we going to How, do how that am part? I going to fast? Or, for example, it could be even sharing your faith. And you may be very shy, and, it's, and you may think, how am I going to share my faith? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have a hard time speaking to someone mm -hmm. who is just passing by. I'm not saying us ourselves. Right, right. But you may feel that way. Yeah. You may, God may have given you a manuscript to publish. And you may say, you know what? I, I, I may not have graduated from college or high school, and mm -hmm. how am I going to produce a book? Mm -hmm. You may feel that there is something that God needs for you to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's forgiving someone. Right, come on. It could be come forgiving someone that hurts you. Yes. And you say, how in the world am how I going world? to do this? Yes, Lord. You see, God has requirements of us. Yes, Lord. He makes demands on us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we wonder, how are we going to do it? How are we going to do it, Lord? Well, we have some good news today, baby. Thank you, Lord. We have some good news good today, news, saints. Good news, good news. Hallelujah. Today, we've entitled this message, The Grace Force. The Grace Force. 
force. The grace force. And so we're going to encourage ourselves with the word of God. We will be reading from Judges chapter 6. Come on. Verses 11. Judges chapter 6, verses 11. We're going to be reading from the NIB version. And from the NIB version. And just follow along with us. And if we were together in person, we would say, when you get there, say amen. Amen. And so we'd ask that you turn in your Bible yes. to Judges chapter 6. We're going to be starting from verse 11. We're going to be reading verse 12, and we'll skip down to a couple of verses. Just follow along with us. Amen. Amen. All right. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Orbra mm -hmm. that belonged to Joash the Abizarite, mm -hmm. where his son Gideon mm -hmm. was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. Wow. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Wow. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. and we'll skip down to verse 14. Amen. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have, you have and save Israel out of the Midian's hand. Wow. Am I not sending you? Mm. But Lord, Gideon asked, how can I save Israel? Mm. My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, wow. and I am the least in my family. Mm. The Lord answered, I will be with you, mm. and you will strike down all the Midianites together. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. Amen. Amen. Powerful so we thank God for the hearing and the reading of his word. Yes, powerful. And you see, we have a situation mm -hmm. with a character named Gideon. Mm -hmm. And this was during a time when the children of Israel, they were under attack. And their land was being encroached upon so much so that they had to flee. They had to go into the to the mountains even to, mm -hmm. to live in caves. And they, they, they were being encroached upon and even attacked mm -hmm. by the Midianites. Mm -hmm. And it was to the extent where it had gotten so bad that, for example, Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press. Mm -hmm. That's, normally you, you, you grow wheat in a field. But he had to secretly grow his wheat in a wine press mm -hmm. so that the Midianites wouldn't overtake him. And so here he is in this place. And then he has a divine visitation, a divine visitation. And with this divine visitation, the scripture says the angel of the Lord. And so often when we see the angel of the Lord, it is a, a, a description often of Christ before he came as a man, mm -hmm. the pre-incarnated Christ. Mm -hmm. The angel of the Lord angel came to Gideon, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And he had a conversation with him. And as he met Hallelujah. Gideon, the first thing he said, he identified who he was. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to look, and it says in chapter 6, mm -hmm. we're looking at verse 12. Amen. It says, and when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, yes, he yes. said, the Lord is with you yes. mighty, warrior. mighty warrior he called him a mighty warrior Hallelujah! and this is interesting because gideon may not have Hallelujah. saw himself yes, as on. a mighty warrior come on. he was afraid come and on. he was hiding and he was growing his produce in a wine press come on. come on somebody and then when we look down further it says the lord in verse 14 the lord turned to him mm -hmm. and said go in the strength you have mm -hmm and save Israel out of Midian's hands. I, am I not sending you? Right. Am I not sending you? Right. And then it goes on. Mm -hmm. And at verse 15, it says, but Lord, Gideon said, how can I save Israel? Mm -hmm. My clan, my clan is the weakest in many, in the, my clan is the weakest. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yes, honey. No, go ahead. Okay. Oh, I thought you had something. No. My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, mm -hmm. and I am the least in my family. Mm -hmm. And so here it is. He's saying that he is the weakest in Manasseh. Mm -hmm. He's right. also identified that his clan is the weakest among the Israelites. Mm -hmm. So he said, how are you calling me a mighty warrior? Yes, yes. Why are you choosing me? If you've ever looked at some of the movies, there are times in which you may see someone who may be very thin and very weakly. And you may think, how is it that they will be someone that will save a nation? Well, that's how Gideon felt. Mm -hmm. He needed the grace force of God, the grace force of God. Mm -hmm. And we see with this grace force, 
he had to recognize his first for, first and foremost his name yeah. that he was the mighty warrior mm -hmm. that god had empowered yeah the mighty warrior. mighty warrior it was the grace force of god that was upon him for him to execute the very demand that god placed on him and so saints i want you to think about what grace means see grace has two meanings grace can mean on the one hand god's undeserved favor mm -hmm. there are times in which god will extend to us things we don't even deserve that's his grace but grace say also means god's supernatural divine empowerment mm -hmm. to perform a particular task or to endure a certain condition it's the grace of god you see the grace of god is needed for us to meet god's standard you see we started off asking the question how can i do the very things that god is requiring of me how can i do these things it will be by the grace of god saint even as we see in the story with gideon as the story goes on which is amazing honey i read the story and i was i was amazed because then gideon said lord if i have found favor in your eyes he just wanted to know prove to me that what you said is actually going to happen and then he he got a an offering and he was speaking to the angel and he said to the angel hold on while i'll go get my offering and then i'm gonna bring it to you and i'm gonna ask you a question and then the angel said i'll wait for you he what brought an offering and then the angel told him what to do he offered that offering and then the angel took a staff touched the offering and it ignited even the rock ignited and then he said i have seen the lord and then the angel said don't be afraid you're not gonna die you see oftentimes people knew that if you saw god you may not live to tell about it because the radiant splendor of the magnificent glory of god can be fatally fantastic mm -hmm. he recognized you know what i'm in the presence of god himself and then god said the lord said you're not going to die and it was in that place that a memorial was made mm -hmm. it was in that place that gideon named that place the lord is peace mm -hmm. jehovah shalom that's amazing and so this is when we hear about the Lord being peace. You see, Gideon had peace with the God of the universe. You see, he was spared. But it was in that encounter that he recognized the grace force of God. You see, God extended to him not only, not only mercy or not only something that he wasn't worthy to qualify for. You see, he could have lost his life. He extended to him life. Right. But he you, also sir. extended him the power and the supernatural ability to fulfill the task mm -hmm. that he had to endure. You see, say sometimes God is calling us to do a thing and it may seem impossible for you to do it in your own strength, but it's the grace force of God that will give you the divine enablement to do whatever it is God has called you to do. Amen. We can also look at the scripture found in James. Now there's some interesting things when we think about the grace of God. And we need to have a, a certain posture similar to the posture that Gideon had. You see, Gideon wasn't full of pride. He wasn't full of arrogance. He didn't say, yeah, I'm the man, or yes, yeah, send me. I have all power and I have all strategy and I have wisdom to overcome the Midianites. No, Midian said, I'm weakest among my clan. And my people are, are weakest among the nation. And you're choosing me? I'm the least of the least. I'm the weakest of the weakest. And if we were to compare him maybe to some others, it would be like comparing a, a weak link, a skinny, skinny person to someone who is a huge bodybuilder. He probably felt like that. If you've ever seen the movie, it kind of reminds me of when, when you're, whenever you see, if you're into Marvel comics, there was a, a character. His name is Captain America. But before he got big and strong, they showed a picture of how he looked before he went through his transformation. And he was weakly and small, but he had the heart of a warrior. You see, Gideon didn't even have the heart of a warrior, but God spoke it into him. God spoke it into him. When he said, wise, mighty, or he called a mighty warrior, he spoke into, inside of him that there was a, a heart of a warrior inside of him, that he was going to achieve greatness. 
You see, God is calling you a mighty warrior. He's causing you not only and no longer to think of yourself as being weakest among your clan. You're not the black sheep. You're the chosen of God. Amen. You see, God wants to raise you up. And his grace force will enable you to do great exploits for the Lord. Amen. Amen. If we look at James, we're going to look at James. And we're going to turn to James chapter 4. And we're going to look at James chapter 4, verse 6. And honey, could you, could you read that for us? But he gives us more grace. That is why the scripture says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. He gives the grace force. He gives his divine enablement. You see, those who are proud, mm -hmm. they oftentimes depend on only themselves. They rely on their own human ingenuity. They, in some way, no longer seek God for strength. Right. They think that the strength and the wisdom is all inside of them. Mm -hmm. They're full of pride and they may be arrogant. They may think, hey, I got this. But God is saying he resists those who are proud. Yes. You see, those who are proud may not experience great success. Right. But God says those who are humble, mm -hmm. someone who is humble now is not someone necessarily who has a low self-esteem. Right. They esteem themselves correctly, but they recognize they need God and they may need others to help them achieve success. Yes, yes. They recognize first and foremost, I need God to help me do anything. Right. I need God to help me wake up in the morning. Yes. I would not be successful. I could not even survive if it worse, wasn't for the grace or the empowerment or the help of the Holy Spirit or God himself. Those who are humble, God says in his word, he will give us grace, yes. the grace force. And you see, Gideon had a humble heart. And God said, I'm going to give you the very thing that you need. Mm -hmm. He's going to give him the, the very uh, equipment, the very power, the very energy, the very strength that he needs to accomplish the very task mm -hmm. of saving Israel from the from the Midianites. Amen. This is amazing. And as we look at the story, which is awesome, there were times he called the Israelites out and then God said, wait a minute, you have all of these men to fight against the Midianites. And then the story goes on and we might be familiar. He said, you had too many men. Mm -hmm. To make a long story short, that huge number was reduced to 300 men. And the Midianites were a vast army vast army and the word says that they were as numerous as the as the sand on the sea they were vast they couldn't be counted and so 300 men against all of these thousands of men right. that was a slaughter mm -hmm. but god was saying you know what i don't want israel to take credit for what i'm going to do that's right you see, sometimes God chooses you because he recognizes that you will give him the glory, you will give him the praise, and no one else will get the glory from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then when people see the great exploit that you've accomplished, they will say, ain't no way in the world that he could have done it or she could have done it by themselves. That has to be God. That has to be no other yes. person but yes. God himself. You see, God reduced the number for mm -hmm. Gideon. Mm -hmm. God chose Gideon. Yes who was weakest in his own estimation and maybe by the estimation of his people, maybe by the estimation of his clan. Mm -hmm. He just didn't make that up. Mm -hmm. But even amongst the, the number of people who were chosen, who were selected, he even reduced that number so that God could get the glory. Mm -hmm. And they won the fight. Hallelujah. And it was so much, it, it was just amazing. The fight goes on and this was, the, um, this was a miracle. They, they took ram's horns and they blew the horn. 300 men, they surrounded the Midianites. They blew the horn and they smashed glasses. And the noise caused the Midianites to be afraid to the extent where they fought each other. Mm. And then at the end of their fighting, there were none left alive. Mm. God had destroyed the Midianites by their own hand. God gave divine strategy. The blowing of the shofar, the blowing of the horn. 
And it's interesting, honey, we're in a season right now, mm -hmm. Rosh Hashanah, which not only indicates the time of the new year that states when Adam and Eve were, were first born, when they were first created, mm -hmm. and it goes on to the, the understanding is that for 5,779 years now, that's how long it's been since Adam and Eve were created, Rosh Hashanah. So, we're create, so we celebrate the new year. Mm -hmm. But the, also the other aspect of Rosh Hashanah, it's the Feast of Trumpets, when the trumpets shall blow. You see, God is giving us strategy, saying, even as he gave Gideon strategy, blow the trumpet, blow the trumpet in your circumstance, blow the trumpet, because the trumpet of God, the strategy of God that he gives you will release the grace force for you to have victory over every challenge that you may be facing. It's the grace force of God. And we can see we need to be humble in order to achieve the very thing that God gives us. And it's interesting because you would think, why not choose a stronger clan? Why not choose a stronger person? But God always has strategy. And you may think, God, why are you choosing me? Out of all of my siblings, out of all of the people that are connected to me or around me, why are you choosing me? Why me? Mm -hmm. And I want to show you something in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. And it says, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose, here it is, the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Mm. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. And you see, God chose you. God chose us, yes. and we need to remain humble. And if you feel like maybe you're just not strong enough, or you're just not smart enough, or you don't have the pedigree that someone else has, you don't have the degrees, maybe you didn't graduate from high school or from college, or maybe you didn't achieve certain things, but God is saying, I'm going to choose you to do great exploits, even as he chose Gideon. Yes. And he's going to give you strategy. And just like Gideon, he had to blow the trumpet, blow the ram's horn, the shafar, to invite the power and the presence of God in your circumstance to do great exploits. It's the grace force of God, saying, It's the grace force. grace force. And we see in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, We can or I can do all things through Christ mm -hmm. who strengthens me. Yes. You see, God will strengthen us, saying, he will strengthen us, honey, mm -hmm. with his grace. Yes. His grace force will strengthen us. It will give us what we need to achieve. Whatever, now listen to this. Whenever God places a demand on you, whenever God places a demand on our lives, mm -hmm. he will always equip us with everything we need to achieve. Mm -hmm. We can bank on that. Yes. We can call God on the fact that Lord, you called me to it, you're going to bring me through it, right. and you will equip me to achieve. Right. You will equip me to achieve. Right. It's interesting how when demand is placed on us, mm -hmm. sometimes, honey, we never realize what we are able to do right. until demand is placed on us. You see, demand was placed on Gideon. He thought that he was weakest, but he recognized that there was something inside of him that God gave him that allowed him to save a nation. Mm -hmm. There's something inside of you, say, that God wants to use Amen. that will cause you to build his kingdom and to save somebody's life. Mm -hmm. You see, you are valuable in God. When demand is placed on you, you can do great exploits. Yes. Honey, it kind of reminds me of the time, and you may have heard stories of a mother who may only weigh, let's say, 105 pounds, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, she learns or she hears the scream or the cry of her baby, mm -hmm. and she turns and she sees her child underneath a, a car that weighs thousands of pounds, mm -hmm. about to be crushed to death. Mm -hmm. And that mother, 105 pounds, maybe 5'2 in height, will run over to that vehicle weighing three, 4,000 pounds mm -hmm. and lift it up over her shoulder mm -hmm. to save her baby. You see, an incredible demand was placed on a human being, mm -hmm. and that human being was able to do extraordinary things. Yes. She had the grace force mm -hmm. of God mm -hmm. to save her child. Yes. 
You see, there's a grace force in you. There's a grace force in me. There's a grace force in us, honey, mm -hmm. that will enable us and empower us to do great things. Yes. God will take the ordinary and do the extraordinary. Mm -hmm. You see, God will do the incredible through us, mm -hmm. but we have to depend on him. Mm -hmm. We have to believe in him, even as Gideon did. Yes. Even as Gideon did. Yes. It's amazing. Uh, the, and now watch this. God distributes his grace. Yes. You see, God is not stingy with his power, but he distributes his grace. Now, his grace isn't just for us, for our own personal selfish gain, That's right. but his purpose for the grace force that he releases in our lives is to build his kingdom, is to build his kingdom mm -hmm. and to do his will. And we can see in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, we're talking about the grace force of God. Amen, the grace force. First Peter chapter four and verse 10. And it says, each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, yes. faithfully administering what? God's grace in its various forms. You see, the gifts that we receive yes. Yes. is a form of the grace force of God. Some of you are called to preach. Some of you are called to teach. Some of you are called to speak prophetically. Some of you are called apostolically. Some of you are called as pastors. Some of you are called, some of us are called, us are called. to evangelize. And God will equip you with everything that he places a demand for you to do. He will give you a gift. And that gift is a form of his grace, yes. his supernatural divine enablement, mm -hmm. so that when you go forward, not depending on your own strength, when you go ahead to do what God has said, not relying on your own ingenuity, it will be the grace of God, the anointing of God, that will allow you to be effective and powerful and you will break chains, yes. set people free, yes. save lives. You can turn a nation around like Gideon did, and you will build God's kingdom. You will build God's kingdom. You see, God even shows us, even in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7, again, it goes on and it says, but to each one, honey, to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. And then it goes on and he said, I gave some to be apostles and some to be prophets and some to be uh, pastors and some to be evangelists, some to be teachers. And he said, I gave them grace to do the very thing that I placed a demand on them to do. Sometimes, as we talked about in the beginning, <clears throat> we may look at what God has, is demanding us to do. Yes. And we may say, I can't do this. And sometimes we may delay doing the will of God because we are thinking of our own ability. Right. God is saying, think of him. It's the grace force of God. Mm -hmm. Think that God will work through you to accomplish his ends. You see, when we offer God our lives and our bodies, the scripture says we are to lay our lives down as living sacrifices. Yes. Holy, that's how you live and acceptable unto, unto the Lord. And this is our reasonable act of worship yes. and our reasonable act of service. Yes. You see, when we give God our own bodies, he says, now that's what I want, because now I can work through you mm -hmm. to live the way I am calling you to live. Mm -hmm. Don't try it in your own strength. There may be certain habits that you feel like you can't overcome, but God says you may not be able to overcome in your own strength, yeah. but in my power and with my grace, I will give you what you need to achieve, yes. Yes. to overcome it. You see, God says, my grace, my grace, my grace force, my grace is sufficient. Yes. You see, God will give you what you need to achieve. His grace is sufficient. Yes. Amen, 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 amen. 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 You can God. do it, say, yes. we're going to go and we're going to accomplish great exploits. For the word of God says, 
you can do it. His grace is sufficient. He gives us his grace for us so that we can accomplish great ends. You can win, saint. You can overcome that thing that's coming against you. You can win, saint. You can endure the challenge that you're going through. You can do it because of the grace of God is upon you. Call on God's grace. And he will meet you in the place where you are. Even as he met Gideon. Yes. And that place was called the place of peace. He said, this is what I will memorialize this place yes. as. The Lord <laughs> Almighty of peace. You see, God will give you peace. No longer will you struggle. Mm -hmm. No longer will you fight. No longer will you stress over this. No longer by the sweat of you by your brow will you, will you labor. Mm -hmm. God says, I will give you Hallelujah. grace for this race. Yes. I will give you my grace yes. for us to accomplish what you need. Yes. God is with you, Sam. Hallelujah. Call on the grace of God. Yes. The grace force of God be released in you now. Yes. In Jesus' in the name. name of Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the Lamb of God. Amen. How many Amen. receive the grace force, the grace Amen. of God, the yes. enabling ability to accomplish great exploits yes. and to do what our human bodies and our mortal bodies and our finite minds yes. cannot do. We call upon the grace of God. Yes. Hallelujah. We thank God for Gideon for even this story in the, the book, in the Bible, to share this story with us to let us know that sometimes we feel least of those. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we feel like our family is least of those. Like Gideon said, my family is the least and I am the least of them. Yes. Hallelujah. But we thank God. Hallelujah. All the scripture that was spoken about today yes. to encourage us that God takes the food things to confound the mm. wise that God is concerned about us and he wants the glory in all areas he does yes. not want us to take the glory for our own mm. praise God Hallelujah. and you know what I found mm. that it takes the weight off your shoulders yes. when you don't have to rely on yourself when mm. you don't have to rely on the power that you have mm. your little power we don't mm. have to rely on going in the name of the lord but doing it all of our, all on our own mm -hmm. we thank god that we can rest in god yeah. for his strength for his power mm. and for his grace yeah. hallelujah mm -hmm. it really can take the load off somebody and really think that i'm going in the name of the lord yes. i'm not going in my own name mm. i'm not saying in the name of such and such and in the name of so and so yeah. i'm saying in the name of jesus be healed, be delivered, and yes. I will destroy mm -hmm. the works of the enemy mm -hmm. in, the in the name of Jesus. Jesus. So yes. we thank God Hallelujah. that we can go in the name of the Lord. We thank God that we can receive the grace of God. We mm. thank God that we can receive the power of God. We thank God that we can become lowly and mm. humble in our spirit. And God recognizes and sees the state of our inner being, and he will give us the grace to lift us wow. up and wow. to exalt us and to use us powerfully mm -hmm. through his name. Wow. And we thank God for that today. Is that anyone saying, say, God, I need the grace force. God, I need the grace force. God, I need you. I need more of you. I need yes. the grace force mm -hmm. to, to do and to accomplish great exploits in your yes. name and just to be in my life, God. I need I need the grace force. I need the grace of God to live this life, mm. God, that you're calling me to live. Sometimes yes. I feel like I'm tugged between the world and between mm. uh, my, my belief in mm. you, but God, I need the grace force the grace. to live a righteous life. Yes. I need the grace force mm. to do what mm. you've called me to do. I need the grace force to fast. I need the grace force to turn this away. Mm. I need the grace of God to step out on faith yes. and to launch out into the deep. Mm. I need the grace force of God. Is that anybody today? Mm. If that's you, we pray that God in the name of Jesus name of will Jesus. give you yes. what you need mm. to accomplish what you need when you need it. Wow. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Awesome. Hallelujah. Awesome. Awesome. Hallelujah. That's so amazing. we believe God mm. for the grace. Hallelujah. We pray in Jesus' yes. name, God, that you would just continue to have your yes, way for those God. that are listening. Mm -hmm. We pray that whatever it is that they may be struggling with, that yes. they feel that they don't have the grace or the power to accomplish that thing, whether it's their eating habits, whether it's mm -hmm. stepping out and launching out into the deep, whether it's living a, a, a righteous life, yes, okay. whatever it is, the, the spectrum is vast. God, we pray for your grace to be released now upon your people. Release it now, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Draw them closer, oh God, in their minds, in their souls, in their spirit, and let your grace spread abroad in them and over their lives right now. It's in Jesus' in name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Someone give God all the praise. Hallelujah. Give God all the glory. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you.
Hallelujah. We thank you today. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you today, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And if this word has resonated you, with Jesus. you and you feel like, God, you know, I've been trying, but I've been failing and I need your grace. And you feel like before I can have your grace, I need to have you in my life. Yes. You need the God of the universe in your life. And you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're giving you an opportunity to receive Jesus. Yes. Receive Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, God opens up his hands and his heart to you. He loves you. And he wants a relationship with you. And if you want to pray this prayer from your heart, we ask that you would repeat after yes. us. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we come to, before you now. We come before you now, and we admit to you. We admit to you that we are a sinner. That we are a sinner, and we ask God. We ask you that God, you forgive us. That you would forgive us for all of our sins. For all of my sins. Right now, God. Right now. I thank you. I thank you for sending Jesus. For sending Jesus to die on the cross at Calvary. To die on the cross at Calvary. To pay for all of my sins. To pay, pay for all of my. Sins. And for raising him back to life. And for raising him back to life. So I can live. So that I can live. And right now. Right now. I receive. I receive. What Jesus Christ has done for me. What Jesus Christ has done for me. And I open up my heart. I open up my heart. And my life. And my life. And I invite him in. I invite you in. As my Lord. As my Lord. And as my Savior. And as my Savior. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For forgiving me. For forgiving me. Of all of my sins. Of all of my sins. And for welcoming me. And for welcoming me. Into your family. Into your family. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the name of the we Lord give God. God. The glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We certainly give God all glory, yes, honor, and praise do. tonight. Hallelujah. Today, actually. Yes. Hallelujah. We thank you for joining in and watching yes. with Healing Fire Deliverance Ministries, our Sunday service mm -hmm. of the Grace Force. We yes. pray that you were blessed. We pray mm -hmm. that you've gotten something out of the word today. Mm -hmm. And we pray that God will continue to do great things in your life. We will meet the next time on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern yes. Standard Time mm -hmm. for our Healing Fire Deliverance Ministries Tuesday night of Bible study. And we pray that you would join us there. Don't forget to tag someone, share this page, share yes. this post, share uh -huh. this broadcast with someone who may need a word from God. Mm -hmm. We just thank God again for this day and we bless you. Right now, we declare that you are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the field. You are blessed in your down sitting. You are blessed in your uprising. You are blessed when you come and when you go. Reverend McLeod will go ahead and give us the benediction. Amen, amen. amen. And if you would just lift your hand to the screen, we're going to bestow a blessing upon you. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift you up with his countenance. And may the Lord fill you with his joy, with his peace, and with his grace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you for joining Healing Fire Deliverance Ministries. God bless you. Amen. God bless you.